Hey, Ashley Buckholt, CRO Materials Exchange, Chicago, Illinois. We're the first, the only, the best B2B e-commerce digital platform changing the way lumber, OSB, and plywood will be bought and sold forever. We are changing the old analog market where we believe that you, the buyer and the seller, deserve instant digital pricing satisfaction. As a buyer, you can click, point, click, and look at whatever the best price is, move your number around, and if you think it's the best number, you can buy it, delivered to you. If you think it's not the best number, you can change your bid and move it around. Sellers, you can do the same thing. It shows FOB your location, and you now have access to thousands of people instantaneously that you've never had before. Hey, I grew up dialing for dollars on the wholesale floor, and I can tell you in a day making 50 calls is pretty tough. How about pointing and clicking something and making 5,000 calls? Think about that. It'll change your life, and it'll revolutionize your business and move you into the new century. All right, let's talk a little bit about some questions. Last week, we tried an educational seminar or an educational series. This will be part two. Somebody sent me, said, can you explain to me how lumber works in the distribution chain? Another person on YouTube said, what is a reload and how do you use one? So I said, hey, let's do this all in this one video. So let's, without further ado, let's start it out. Distribution chain is pretty simple yet pretty complicated. As you can see, the spaghetti chart I put up here. All right, ultimately mills have OSB, plywood and lumber that they make, and they want to end up eventually in a home, a pallet, a remit model job, or an apartment multifamily complex, or something of that nature. So in the middle sit all the nodes, all the parts of the chain, the home center chain we all are familiar with, the contractor yard, the large chain, the treater, Treaters obviously take the southern yellow pine, put them into a cylinder, suck the air out, and put the treated in that you put you make your decks and stairs and so forth out of. Office wholesaler, buying groups. Buying groups are people that facilitate smaller, mid-sized buyers. Uh, they go out and get their members and try to consolidate bids uh, and use buying power to purchase things. Um, office wholesalers sit on a great big floor, some have their own little rig fences, spruce, southern pine, hemfer, and they all sit around trying to get bids and offers, bids and offers, bids and offers, and try to figure out if they want to buy low, sell high, or in a market that's falling, sell high and buy low if they short sold it. All right, uh, very familiar with that. Wholesale distribution, kind of similar to office wholesalers, except they use public warehouses. Some have their own warehouses, but they try to pick markets where they can buy undervalued things, hedge them, or just ride them out at the, if they have an absolute low price. So they take some risk there, um, very important function. Pure distribution, and we know these regional chain or regional players or national players, they bring in everything, sidings, uh, deckings, you know, anything that goes into construction and you can buy onesie, twosie units from them, less than truckloads and their trucks make routes around all the time. Uh, also add a lot of value to the distribution chain. General contractors, framers, multifamily developers, multifamily distributors, uh, large and small home builders, industrial, people that make pallets, crates, so forth. They have the different methods of coming up with solutions to package and create things or create those solutions so other people can do it. Offsite construction, truss and wall panel. And now we have also the big, uh, the big wooden panels, engineered panels that were popping up all over that we're building this large, uh, large frame construction out of. So that's kind of how the supply chain works. Now this is the entering part, interesting part. Many of these go from mill to here to here. Not as much price discovery, because if you remember from some other ones, these are all done on an index base. They are price takers that look at an index that prints once or twice a week, and their contracts are based on that. Not a lot of risk there, they just go ahead and just follow through on what the price is. Then you have the rest of these places where they're buying some of them on contract, where they're also taking index price, but a lot of them buy uh, spot. Spot means they're trying to find price discovery. Now, when I said this looks like spaghetti, this is everybody. Sometimes all of these can touch multiple parts of people in this chain before it gets here, okay? So what we call that is the part of the distribution cycle when there's multi people in it, buying from one person, selling to another, who sells to another, that finally ends up getting there. That adds cost, right? So the traditional wholesale markup is about 
uh, to its highest 10% in the last year, right? You have A, B, and C items, the real high moving items, earns and turns, get a little lower percentage because at the end you're, you turn it enough, you make better money on it. B and C items, you wanna get a little bit more. But overall, it's about a four to 10% market. When you get into more specialty distribution, it has to be a little higher than that to pay all the trucking, all your employees, everybody else. So you can, you can see what I'm talking about here. But ultimately, if you're in this node, you wanna figure out how to get the best price. And to get the best price and to close that bid ask spread, you want to get as many prices from as many people as quick as you can. That's where materials exchange comes in and helps you do that. Now let's talk about reloading. So the person that asked me about reloading, it's a great question because a reload is simply a facility in North America or Canada where you bring in large amounts of lumber, unload them, break them up, and ship them in smaller amounts of lumber on a truck. So let's say you're in Ames, Iowa, and you have never bought a carload of lumber in your life, you just bought trucks because you don't have a rail siding going in. You can call a reload facility in let's say Ames, Iowa, Des Moines, Iowa, and say, hey, what are your charges? Here's what they're gonna tell you. They have an onloading and a loading charge. Think about that onloading and loading charge. That rail car comes in, they charge, let's say $1,000 a car. I just made that up so we, so we know that. 30 days free storage, and then it's usually a charge after that. That's about standard, but that can be different, so you wanna check, okay? Then they have a delivered to final, if they do their own trucking, or you can use a third-party logistical provider to figure out the truck. I just said, let's say a thousand dollar haul within 150 miles or hundred miles of that location. So for a car, it's $2,000, okay? I also said for trucks, some, they also do trucks where you can bring it in and do the same thing. But let's say in a car, it's $2,000, okay. So if you remember, a car load has 112,000 board feet on it, all right? So divided by 2,000, 2,000 is simply $1,000 for the car to unload, load it back on a truck, 30 day storage, $1,000 to ship it back out. That equals $18 per 1,000 board feet. So let's say you get a price to Des Moines, Iowa, you call somebody or you go on materials exchange and in Des Moines, Iowa it says $700 deliver, okay? $700 delivered Des Moines, Iowa to this public facility. The public facility has a line, it could be UP, it could be BN, but the rate is preloaded into materials exchange. You go on there, you look at what your truckload is, and you're like, oh my gosh, a carload may be better. Here's how you know. $700 a thousand plus the $18 is $718 a thousand. If you remember the math we did last week, a two by four divided by 12 has 0.6667 board feet per foot times nine, which is a 104 and five base length, nine feet, six board feet. So we have 718 times six is $4.31 delivered to your final job site. So that's how you know if it's a value comparing that to what it would be on truckload delivered to you or from distribution. So again, you would just run the math and figure out if I use a public reload, how much it would be then to deliver those four trucks to all those locations. All right, those reloads are all over Alabama, Northeast, Midwest, Southwest, Texas, all you have to do is call and find them. If you need help, you can go to mxlumber.com, send me a direct message, go to my LinkedIn, send me a direct, me direct message, and I'll help point you in the, rest, in the best direction. Uh, so this hopefully has helped you look at the distribution side of our business and how you, as a buyer, can help facilitate potentially a better price by using public reloads. Again, come to mxlumber.com. We're gonna make this digital experience one of the best things that's gonna change the way you do business in the lumber panel and OSB business. This is Ashley Buckle from Chicago. Have a great weekend.